we're back to continue predicting the NFL or NHL divisions. And in this episode, it is the central division. We're moving out west. I'm excited to talk about this with you folks all in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey there, Kaniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you're listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now we are continuing our predictions for the NHL divisions. We are finally moving out west. We're going to start with the central division. Again, this is part one of two. These are my predictions. In part two, we'll be getting Andrews. And you know, I'm very excited to talk about this, uh, as well as all of these uh, divisions as well. Now, starting off with the central division, just like the others, we're starting from the top, working our way down, folks. Number one, I have the Colorado Avalanche. I definitely see them getting over uh, their Stanley Cup hangover. I see them bouncing back and being the dangerous team that we know they can be and they know and that we know they will be. I don't see them uh, having a repeat of last year. Last year, I know, again, Stanley Cup hangover. They're really uh, having some issues with injuries as well. I believe Gabriel Landeskog is still going to be out this year. We'll see how things shake out there. But we know how talented this team is. We know how talented the Avalanche is. We know. We know, folks. So that doesn't need any explaining there. This is going to be a team that could potentially come out of the West. And we know how good they are. And again, I do not see a Stanley or I see them bouncing back from that Stanley Cup hangover. Excuse me. You know, you look at the talent on that team. They are extremely, extremely dangerous. And we know what they are capable of. Again, I think the main thing for them is just going to be staying healthy. If they can stay healthy, I think they can win the Central again. But that's just going to have to be something we wait and see. If they can do it, I think they can. I think they're the front runners for the central division. I think that's, I'm pretty confident in saying that if they're healthy. Now, next up is really uh, my biggest competition for them, and that'll be the Dallas Stars. Uh, and I'm still kind of unsure about that one, but I definitely still see them being pretty good this year. Yeah, they're coming off a trip to the Western Conference Final. I know uh, a lot of us were looking forward to a you know, potential barbecue Stanley Cup, uh, of course, you know, between uh, them and the Carolina Hurricanes uh, last year. But, of course, that didn't happen, unfortunately. Now, looking at, you know, the Stars, you know, you again, they're another team that, you know, I think that, yeah, if they're healthy, you know, they can be really good. You know, we saw, you know, Tyler Sagan, you know, he's finally starting to get healthy again and, you know, what he can do, you know, and then, you know, you look at some of these young guys that they have on their team, Rope Hintz, uh, you know, he's a guy that is going to be really freaking good for them, uh, who, oh God, I'm totally blanking on the guy's name oh my lord uh <laughs> that was just in the contention for the um for the freaking calder trophy oh my god i am blanking here folks jason robertson oh my lord yeah you're coming out you look at what yeah he has done oh my lord he is so freaking good and you know, I think that this is going to be a team that, again, very much like some of the other teams we've already talked about, you know, like the Florida Panthers, like the Buffalo Sabres. I think that this is a team that uh, is going to continue to build off of the momentum that they built uh, last year. Robertson, especially, I think he's going to have a really good season. Hopefully, I don't blank on his name again this year. Oh, my Lord, that was embarrassing. 
But yeah, this again, the Dallas Stars, you know, I think you know can really uh, make some noise out in the West this year. I really, really do. And plus, you know, the Western Conference, you know, being you know weaker than the East, I, yeah, that makes it a bit easier, you know, for a team you know like Dallas, you know, you know, to make a, a deeper run. Whereas uh, if they're in the East, they that may not be the case. Now, number three, I have the Minnesota Wild. I believe that's this. I believe that's where they finished last year. Uh, but not intentional. But you know, it 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 is what it is. But yeah, the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, they're a yeah they're going to be a playoff team. But yeah, they're very much you know at times their own worst enemy. Uh, and I think that you know they're an, uh, another team that can they can make the playoffs, but you know are they making a deep run? No, I I don't see them making a super deep run. But they are again you know a team with you know, some really good talent on there. You know you look at Kaprizov, you know, you, you you have him. You know you're obviously you know, gonna be in, in a good spot, of course, and. You know, I think that they are, you know, a team that you know, can be you know, a pretty solid playoff team. Of course, you know, they did add Pat Maroon this offseason as well. He's going to add a lot of, you know, you know, leadership and, you know, and, you know, what, and he knows what it takes to win. He's won three Stanley Cups. So, you know, when it comes playoff time, you know, you have that guy there that knows like, hey, you know, this is what we need to do, you know, and you know, I think that you, know, you then of course you look in goal, you know, you have Mark Andre Fleury, you know, one of the best goalies ever, and yeah, he's obviously up there in age, of course, but you know, he's shown that he still has stuff left in the tank, and yeah, you know, I really think you know this is a team, you know, they're going to be a solid playoff team. You know, do they make a run to the Stanley Cup final? No, probably not. But yeah, I do see the Wild still being a good playoff team. Really, for me in the Central, kind of after the Stars, yeah, definitely kind of falls off a bit. Uh, but you know, next up, of course, yeah, number four. Uh, very much, you know, like this is kind of where we're getting to the interchangeableness of some standings. You know, I honestly, you know, maybe could throw. Uh, Minnesota in here, but I don't see them really finishing below like fourth in the division. But we will continue to dive into the central division and what all they can be doing. Uh, and my predictions right after this quick break, folks. Now, folks, it is about to be football season here, and I know a lot of folks are excited. You know, you're seeing more and more football stuff out in stores displays being made folks are putting their flags up folks are excited for football season i am myself so if you're ready to get ready for the nfl season with incredible offers from fanduel america's number one sports book right now new customers can bet five dollars and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed plus get this folks this is phenomenal all customers who bet five dollars will get one hundred dollars off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. This is an absolutely phenomenal offer, folks. I love I love this offer. You know, if you're a fan of uh, an out of market team or you're a fan of multiple teams and you want to watch them all at the same time, you know, if they're all playing you know, one or two in the afternoon, and you want to watch them all, boom, yeah, here you go. They got you covered. And now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is, of course, easy to use, and you can bet on everything uh, from spreads to player props and more and everything in between. You have anything you can think of, they're going to have you covered there. So right now, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. Again, folks, this is a phenomenal offer again yeah you bet five dollars you will get a hundred dollars off nfl sunday ticket from youtube and youtube tv this is phenomenal i love it so again make sure you're taking advantage of this again fanduel.com slash locked on to take advantage of that folks you won't regret it fanduel official partner of the nfl 
Now, diving back into central predictions. Uh, next up at number four, I have the Nashville Predators. Again, you know, a team, yeah, they're going to be playoff team probably, or at least a team yeah, that can kind of be in the mix. Uh, I believe last year they snuck in as a wild card, if I remember correctly. It's been a few months. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I they're a team that I do think, you know, they, they can make a push to the playoffs, but very much, you know, like Minnesota, the, Outside of that, I really don't see them, you know, doing a whole lot. You know, they're a playoff team. They're going to be a good team. They're going to be a hard-hitting, smash-mouth team, you know, like every or most teams in the Central Division. That's just the style of hockey they play. You know, so we know how the National Predators play. We've played them a lot. And, you know, obviously, you know, we're getting farther and farther away from that uh weird covid realigned season so you know some of that stuff is starting to peter off but you like you remember that season and then like the season after oh my god these teams hated each other so you know we're we're getting farther and farther away from that uh of course but yeah you know you look at the central division actually i believe i forgot to mention it with dallas uh matt duchene signed with dallas as well so that's another addition they have there uh, but getting back into Nashville, they're a team, yeah, there'll be a playoff or a team that can push for a playoff spot. But outside of that, probably not a whole lot else. You know, we'll see what happens. I would love to be wrong here. I'd love to be wrong with all these teams. I'd love for all of these or, well, most of the teams, you know, to be able to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, not all of them, not, not every team in the NHL. But, you know, Nashville, they're, Team, they'll, they'll, they'll push for a playoff spot a big end. Outside of that, probably not a whole lot. Uh, now at number five is the St. Louis Blues. This is kind of interchangeable with number six for me. Um, definitely feels like their window has since closed. Uh, they could maybe push for a playoff spot, but that would be about it. I do feel they're definitely entering their rebuilding stage. We've kind of seen that. Uh, last year, uh, as well, you know, they shipped off Tarasenko, you know, at the deadline being you know, the biggest one. Then, yeah, you know, he got shipped off to the New York Rangers. Then, of course, you know, we spent all offseason wondering if he was going to come here to Raleigh. We thought he was, and he didn't. Now he's in Ottawa, but <laughs> you know, they, they just feel like they're. They, I don't know if this will be the year, like they you know, nosedive, but. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It definitely feels like they're getting to that point where it's just about time to just blow it all up, move on, start rebuilding. It feels like they're getting to that point now. Same with the Winnipeg Jets at number six. It does feel like, yeah, they're they're getting to that t- point where, yeah, they it feels like they you know, kind of hit their ceiling of what they're capable of. And now it feels like it's just time to just start over fire sale kind of like what we talked about with the philadelphia flyers where it's just time for them to just start over just start moving get what you can get for guys you know whether it be again we've talked about a lot we'd love to get you know need a rider back you know you know, ship him off you, know, you ship uh connor hellebuck off you know he's already said that he didn't want to sign or resign there you know, so I, that could potentially be one that we legitimately do see at some point this season of him getting shipped off before the deadline. So it feels they're kind of in the same boat as uh, St. Louis. That's why I kind of have those two interchangeable. Uh, Number seven is no surprise, folks, the Arizona Coyotes. Now, I would love to be wrong here. They have made... Uh, some additions this off season, you know, we're going to look at, you know, what their roster looks like now, but you know, they're just, ah, man, you know, it's the coyotes. Uh, and we all know, you know, their struggles and whatnot, but you know, they have made some additions, uh, this off season, but it felt like, you know, it was a lot of guys that, you know, yeah, not really a whole lot else to do. So, you know, we're going to, go sign with them yeah you like they signed uh matt dumba you know they signed jason zucker actually i think he may have trade 
that may have been a trade. I don't remember. Uh, Alex Kerfoot, you know, you look at some of the, like, they got names there, but it does feel like it's not, it's just not a whole lot going on there in Arizona. I, I love for them to be able to put it together and make a push for a playoff spot, at least be in that bubble. Uh, if things shake out right, yeah, they could. I'd love for that to happen for them, but I just don't see it happening. Really, the only way I see them, you know, climbing farther than seventh or sixth in the division is just other teams stinking more than them. Uh, and I know that's kind of mean, but it's just kind of how I see it. You know, I they're as thing saying, I don't think they'd be a playoff team. Uh, and really the only way they get out of the, well, they're not in the basement, but they're like on the stairs to the basement uh, of the division. Uh, they're like at the door to the basement. That's where they're at. Uh, but they're not in the basement, but they're at the door. But, you know, the only way I see them getting higher than that, it's, again, just other teams sticking more. Like, you know, if St. Louis just decides to scrap it, start over, say well, when I peg, you know, if they just, decide to scrap it you know just start over then yeah i could see arizona finishing a bit higher but really i don't see that happening uh again love to be wrong here i'd absolutely love to be wrong because i want them to be good you know they get a lot of crap i'd love for them to be better i'd love for them to make the playoffs i'd love for them to make a run to the stanley cup play i'd love for them to win the stanley cup that would be awesome you know I know a lot of people you know, give them crap you know, for their arena if it being small, them sharing with Arizona State, but that would be an awesome Stanley Cup environment. You know, it being so intimate like that, that'd be really fun. That would, that would be a really fun and unique environment in my opinion, but I don't see that happening. They're not going to be a playoff team, I think, and they're going to be you know, in the contention, the draft lottery again. It's just how it's going to be. Uh, for the time being for them. Now, uh, we do have one more team to talk about with the Central, and we will dive into them right after this quick break, folks. All right, folks, we're back, and it's time to wrap up the predictions for the Central Division. And at number eight, I have the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, yeah, I, I see them finishing last again. Sorry. No, uh, I, I just do. I, you know, yeah, you just had the number one overall pick. Yeah, you signed uh, Connor or you drafted Connor, excuse me. And yeah, it's great and all. But then you look at the team around him. It's not great. It's, it, it, it's not. It's not a great team around him, folks. It's not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it, I just don't see this team being yeah, good at all. Uh, and you, you look at this roster like, okay, you, know, you have again, Connor, uh, yeah, he sticks out. Okay. Nick Felino, Sure. Yeah. But yeah, he's kind of old now. Taylor Hall. Okay. Sure. Yeah. They, you're going to have, you know, a couple decent guys around him, but outside of that, you really don't have a whole lot. I know they signed uh Corey perry as well but yeah you know, it feels like you know some of these additions were just not great <laughs> i you know, really on uh the defensive side of things the only name that really stands out is you know seth jones and that's it uh in goal good luck you know you have peter morazic uh there and Soderblom. i totally butchered that last name but you know this is not going to be a good team, folks. It's not. I'm sorry, you know, folks that still really like Peter Mrazek. You know, I've said before, you know, or we've said before, you know, I kind of feel like he may have been a product of the system here a bit, you know, and, you know, because, you know, ever since he left, you know, the Hurricanes really, you know, uh, fallen off. I see that continuing. You're not putting a good team out in front of him. And yeah, I just don't see Blackhawks being very good this year. I, I don't, I see them being a lottery team yet again. They're going to, their rebuild is going to be several, several years long. It's not going to be one that, you know, you look at 
you know, like the Rangers, there's the Devils, where they're clearly rebuilding and, you know, things just, you know, started hitting right for them, you know, these past couple of years, uh, where they cut, were cut, ended up being ahead of schedule uh, for their rebuild. It's not going to be the case here with Chicago. They're still full rebuild mode. <laughs> still full rebuild mode. Maybe next year, you know, they're able to put a little bit something else together, add some more pieces around Connor. And we'll see what happens, but you know, I, I still see them occupying the basement of the central division. Uh, are they you know, there for the NHL? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I still think they'll probably be Montreal being the worst team in the NHL, but that is what it is there again. All this stuff, you know, you gotta take it with a grain of salt. Anything can happen again. You know, for all we know, Chicago could win the Central Division. They could. Who knows? Uh, it is August 30th. <laughs> okay, folks? Anything can happen. Teams can still make moves. Yeah, all of these teams that we've talked about uh, today, all these teams that we've talked about in previous episodes, and we'll talk about when we preview the Central, all these teams could still make some moves and end up doing something else. We'll just have to wait and see on that. Who knows? What will happen? I don't. You don't. We'll just have to wait and see how this stuff shakes out. So let us know your predictions uh, for the Central. Uh, follow the show along on social media at LO underscore Hurricanes. Myself at Jared Ellis underscore 96. Part two of the Central Division predictions will be coming out soon uh, where we will get Andrew's predictions and thoughts on where all these teams will fall what their ceilings are, what the potentials are. So make sure, again, you're following him also at Asianit53. And we'll talk to you guys in the next episode when we are previewing uh, or predicting, rather, the Pacific Division standings. That'll be wrapping out my predictions uh, for every division. So make sure you are following along for that, folks. And as always, let's go Canes. <laughs>